Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar or we'll run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. It is turning a lot colder over the next 24 hours with a cold front sweeping southwards at the moment bringing much colder air temperatures really struggling into the low to mid teens this next few days and the wind chill will make it feel even colder than that beyond that we have a slow rise more towards average conditions as we see more westerly flows come in we'll have a look at that on the gfs gm east and of and the ensembles and it looks likely we're going to go into quite a westerly phase as i said and there is Hints, perhaps, we could see some stormy weather at times. With the jet stream powering up, low pressure systems getting carried by the jet stream, we could see some big low pressure systems moving in. And there is perhaps a trend, maybe next weekend, so in six, seven days' time, we could see quite a severe low pressure system. Different models of different sort of uh, patterns uh, and different positionings of this low pressure system, but we could see potentially our first name storm of the season if this system come up, did come off first name storm of the uk and islands 2022 2023 um, season so we'll have to see exactly what happens with that it is just hints at this stage but we are seeing a definite trend for quite a big low pressure system moving in but it's how severe and where's the center of the low and the strongest winds uh, that will decide uh, whether it does get named or whether it just remains uh, just a standard low pressure system so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so do start on the live radar you can see we have precipitation pushing in from the north at the moment now this is a cold front which has got much much colder air in behind it now ahead of it there's actually a wedge of milder warmer air and it's a bit of drizzly thick cloud rain and uh, some rain within that um, falling across parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland that will slowly sink southwards bringing widespread cloud as uh, so some drizzle humid sort of conditions fall behind the cold front much colder air sweeps in it turns drier uh, at least temporarily before showers will start to build up in northern and eastern coastal areas uh, but yeah turning a lot colder feeling even colder than the thermometer is showing um, and there could be some very cold nights as well it has sort of downgraded a little bit over the last 24 hours or so. The upper air temperature is not getting quite as cold as we anticipated because the northerly wind does get cut off around Tuesday, Wednesday time. So the upper air temperatures look like they're peaking in the north around minus 2, minus 3, 850 HPA and further southwards around freezing. We thought maybe a degree or two colder than that a day or two ago and that's why overnight temperatures are more likely sort of mid single digits than potentially low single digits that we were seeing maybe a day or two ago. But we'll have a look at the UKV in a minute showing that but yeah you can see this precipitation moving southwards giving quite extensive rain across parts of scandinavia and some snow over the higher ground and of course much colder air is digging in behind it and if we do have a look at the surface temperatures around 3 p.m uh, around the peak of the day you can see this largely around average yellows maybe some tinge of orange and some blues further north and this will turning be turning much more towards yellows and blues over the next 24 hours or so and you can see where the air is originating from greenland and iceland which are well uh, down towards low single digits if not towards freezing in many areas so very cold conditions heading our way again it is way too early in the winter slash autumn to be seeing any real cold but it's just generally going to be bringing us a lot chillier weather uh, which is a big contrast to what we've had over the last uh, few months, of course, coming off the back of a very hot summer indeed. So if you go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, now you can see 3 p.m. this afternoon, you've got that milder wedge of air bringing some thicker cloud and a bit of patchy rain across northern England and Scotland, and then you've got the more stark cold front across northern Scotland with uh, some clearer skies behind it and then showers building in. Now you can see over the course of the evening, the precipitation heads slowly further southwards, bringing some slightly brighter conditions in the north, at least for the evening across parts of Scotland. But then showers will start to pop up within the air mass because the upper air temperature has got massive temperature contrast towards the surface conditions, perhaps around 20 degrees at 50 HPA between the upper air temperatures and the sea surface temperatures, uh, which are still in the high teens, if not even touching 20 degrees Um uh, further southwards so yeah uh, it's going to produce a lot of bigger shower clouds some convection in the north but eventually the cold front sweeps through and by monday afternoon all areas are in the colder air mass and you can see heavier showers towards coastal areas but could drift down uh, drift inland at times 
times. But yes, uh, a lot of showers around, dry conditions further inland, but a much colder feeling day. The temperatures on the as we have a look in a minute, will be sort of mid to low teens, but feeling a few degrees colder than that. Through the evening, you can still, still showers around, but there's still a lot of cloud around, which is going to hold the temperatures a little bit up in a few places. You can see some quite heavy uh, showers pushing into Scotland, maybe even some snow over the higher ground through early hours of Tuesday, before eventually we do see more of a westerly flow push in with milder Atlantic air, with areas of precipitation and showers. And you can see just a generally very showery outlook with a general westerly flow. And you can see a little sliding low there, just showing you signs of the times as the westerly flow starts to push back in. Now, if you look at those upper air temperatures, you can see that milder wedge of air at the moment um, across Scotland, but it's getting pushed away by the much colder air flooding in. You can see around freezing, maybe minus one, minus two degrees at of THPA around Monday afternoon and through the evening it slowly still hangs on before getting swept away by slightly milder air. So if you do have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see this morning it did start off pretty chilly, mid to high single digits for many. So we do, uh, we did have quite a cold air mass uh, aloft earlier this morning, but you can see around 16, 17 degrees in the south this afternoon. So not massively mild, but not massively cold either. But it is slowly getting colder. You can see through Monday early hours, you can see not too cold in the south as we still are hanging on to cloud and some mild air masses at least towards the surface. But by Monday afternoon, those temperatures hardly rise at all. You can see widely sort of 10 to 14 degrees, maybe 15 or 16 in the far south and west. And struggling above single digits, mid to high single digits across Scotland and a higher ground of Wales and northern England. So yeah, really, really chilly. And Monday evening, you can see those temperatures do drop away, especially in the north, even in the south, holding around 8 to 10 degrees. But that's because we've got slightly thicker cloud holding those temperatures up a little bit. And by Tuesday afternoon, you can see those temperatures rising once again to around 10 to 13 or 14 degrees. So quite a chilly day still through Tuesday. And Tuesday night will be quite cold, mid to maybe even high single digits in a few spots for Wednesday afternoon, mild rest starts to seep in. You can see the temperatures rise by a degree or two, but still is chilly. And by Thursday, you can see maybe 15, 16 degrees, and you expect by Friday, maybe again 15, 16 degrees. But the nights will still be chilly. You can see there, clear skies, cooler air aloft, and you can see only three or four degrees in a few areas, even in southern England. Really chilly indeed this next week or so. If you, do, if you do now have a look at the GFS and see how that does uh, compare over the next couple of weeks uh, and see what that is showing for the pressure charts. Again, you can see the northern wind at the moment, the very cold air mass pushing in. We sort of stay in limbo with these low pressure systems over the next few days. And then eventually we see massive progression with a big westerly flow and this quite severe little low pressure system moving through next Saturday. Now, this could be our potential named storm. Again, it all depends on its positioning and how strong those wind gusts are. Again, if we have a look at the United Kingdom look, go to those wind gusts and you can see 100 plus kilometers per hour. So around 60, 70 maybe miles per hour there. So very strong and I wouldn't be surprised to see weather warnings issued and potentially a named storm for this. But we'll have to see again. It is still, as I said, six, seven days away. So it still can change quite considerably. If you go out to Europe, uh, Europe view, you can see eventually we just stay in that sort of westerly flow. Low pressure system continually push in, but the GFS today is trying to build high pressure over Europe. Now what this does is initially it brings us relatively warm conditions. You see the upper air temperatures around 10 degrees at Andrew 50 HPA. Wouldn't be surprised to see high 20s, maybe even touching uh, high, sorry, high teens, touching maybe even 20 degrees for some. But the high pressure eventually gets manipulated heads a bit further north and so we see a massive flood of cold air from the Arctic into northwest Europe. Again, it doesn't look too exceptional here because we see much colder air in the winter, but for this time of year, this really is cold. Look at the uh, temperature deviation, massive swathes of northern and western Europe in those blues, really quite cold, 6 to 10 degrees below average, and look at the potential equivalent temperature, massive flood of blues into northern and western Europe, so a really cold feel to the air. Now, this is 384 hours, but we have been alluding to this in the longer range for, through the last few videos, so it's not really a surprise if we did see this sort of pattern come off, but at this stage, there is a lot of uncertainty in the longer range, uh, and we've just got to get through the next week, so 10 days, really, before we can start to have a look uh, what could be properly arriving into October. 
So if we now go to the GM, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, the northerly wind pushing in at the moment. Stay in a bit of limbo with these low pressure systems. And eventually see that low spin up. But the main centre of the low actually stays over Iceland next Saturday. We do see some stronger winds, and we do see some quite big areas of precipitation move in. Could see yellow warnings issued for rain or wind there. But the main centre of the low stays out towards Iceland, so I doubt that would be a name storm. Beyond that, we do see another little low pressure system move in, but generally very similar to the GFS with high pressure trying to build towards Europe, but a westerly flow still trying to push in out of northeast Canada. So yeah, interesting to see that next weekend. Positioning of that low pressure system is nowhere near conductive of a named storm. That will probably just be a general low pressure system, just some heavy rain through next weekend. Um, but it, it, it all depends on its positioning. And we'll have a look at the ECMWF now, and you'll see in this chart today, or this model today, it's pretty much a definitive named storm potentially. So you can see again, a northerly wind pushes in. We just go into a bit of a limbo and then watch that low spin up around to 960 millibars potentially towards the centre of that. You can see there, 964 millibars, extremely strong winds. And yeah, really, really unsettled conditions. This would be a named storm if we did see something like this come off again. You can see by the three different models today, they all are showing stuff slightly different. ECMWF, so yeah, definitely the most severe model. GFS sort of in the middle, touch and go, where there would be a name storm. The GM, definitely not. So this is why I say the potential there in six, seven days' time. But we still got another couple days, really, to have a look at the detail and the positioning of the low. But it is something we need to keep an eye on for next weekend. Of course, we'll be continually bringing this up in the videos over the next couple of days if we see this consistent signal and this, if this sort of pattern does remain in the model output. If we do finish by having a look at the ensembles, you can see generally we are below average over the next sort of six or seven days until that name storm, or that potential name storm, next weekend around the 1st of October, we can see some big rain spikes and a spike in upper air temperatures. Of course, with low pressure spinning up, we're likely to see big clashes of air masses. So we're likely for a time at least to see some very mild air. Beyond that, we generally stay around average, maybe slightly above average, but we also have many going below average, including the operational run in the longer term. And we do have a bit of a split. There are some ensemble members remaining, precipitate, uh, remaining with a precipitation signal, but it's not crazy high. So there's definitely quite a few ensemble members doing what the GFS and the EGM did at the day 10, which is producing that big high pressure system trying to push in across Europe. Now, remember the GFS in the longer term pushed in a northerly wind as uh, the high pressure moved towards Greenland. But for at least a few days, it was quite a warm, dry, high pressure system. So that is something we do need to keep an eye on through the first week of October. But as we've alluded to over the last few videos, we keep, do, we keep getting sort of conflicting outputs for October. So this could flip, uh, to be honest, in the next day or so. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, but at this stage, it's just something uh, that is potentially there. If you also have a look at wind speeds, you can see a little spike towards the first, second of October. Again, nothing too crazy, but again, that's being off put by slower wind speeds. And again, this is London, biggest impact is likely further northwards. And of course, look at the sea level pressure. London, you can see a little dip there, nothing too crazy around the first of October. But if we go to Glasgow, you see even more of a definitive dip. So the centre of the low looks likely to be across the north. It doesn't look like a southerly tracking low pressure system. So it's either going to be that, it looks likely it's going to be in sort of a Iceland to Scotland region. If it's towards Scotland, it could be a named storm. More towards Iceland, probably we'll just see the effects of some gusty winds and some heavy rain. No real severe impacts. So it is something we do need to keep an eye on. If you go over to ECMWF, see how that does compare um, through the next couple of weeks. You can see generally below average over the next sort of five, six days. Big rain spikes towards the first of October uh, with those upper air temperatures rising. And then generally we stay above average for the foreseeable future. But we still have plenty of ensemble members below average. Much higher precipitation signal, but that's expected with more uh, ensemble members. But perhaps not quite a uh, as much of a signal for higher pressure in the longer term. But again, something we need to keep an eye on. And if we do have at least sea level pressure from the East and OF run, you can see a definitive drop there around the 1st of October. So East and OF ensemble members definitely producing that low pressure system perhaps further southwards. Maybe not directly in southern England, but maybe more across northern England and southern Scotland perhaps, because there is a definitive dip there. Some going really low, 960 millibars from one ensemble member there. That would be a severe low pressure system in the south. That would be a sort of a historic storm if we saw that. But you can see most are around sort of 980 to 1,000 millibars really. And if we have a look at that for Glasgow, you can see 
big big dip the average around now 980 millibar so ESMWF ensemble members are really on board with this quite big low pressure system next weekend again we'll have to wait a few days to see whether it gets named most likely would happen Wednesday Thursday time but it is something we need to keep an eye on uh, as I keep saying uh, it is not definitive there are things that can change but definitely the ECMWF on some members today suggesting something very interesting could be coming next weekend so yeah next week of weather looks very interesting we've got cold weather the next few days gonna be chilly you might need your hat and gloves out especially early in the morning uh, and even in the day perhaps uh, if you're towards coastal areas we've got some showers and, and wind chill later in the week turns a little bit less unsettled and slightly milder temperatures creeping up by a couple of degrees but nothing crazy really staying below average still um, and there will still be plenty of showers around for potentially could be seeing some stormy weather next weekend so yeah could be a very interesting week of weather coming up um so yeah make sure you do stay tuned to the forecast and of course there could be some big weather warnings coming out over the next sort of three or four days so i'll keep you uh, up to date with those as well so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon